Hi and welcome back to another episode and today the used car conveyor belt has brought us a Mercedes which is a first for the channel. So this is a Mercedes CLK convertible. This particular vehicle is 15 years old and covered 100,000 miles. Today's video is a little bit shorter and a bit more behind the scenes of the motor trade and what goes on. So things we're going to be doing today is looking at the alloy wheels and refurbishing those, sorting out this terribly disgusting discoloured roof, which has obviously got quite a bit of mould and moss and lichen and stuff growing inside it. And we're going to be cleaning these seats prior to them being recoloured, because at the moment there's quite a bit of wear as you'd expect around about the 100,000 mile mark, especially on the bolsters where people have got in and out. And in the back on one particular side, it's had a dog, I believe, sat in there as well, which has clawed the seat a little bit and damaged the uh, finish on the leather interior. So I'm going to make a guess here that probably this passenger seat's had a child seat bolted onto it. And just over a period of time, it's rubbed in the same spot and just worn through the colour on the leather. And the same things happened on the back seat as well. Either the dogs clawed it a little bit or a box or something was on there at some point in time over a long period of time and it's just damaged it. So my first port of call when I'm starting to wash the car is going to be things like the petrol flap, the engine bay and the door shuts first. Once I've done that, I'll just use a jet wash just to rinse the outside of the vehicle off thoroughly just to remove any of the looser dirt and before you have any contact with the car with a wash mate or anything like that it just reduces the possibility of marring the paint or scratching it. And now it's time to tackle this rather tired looking roof. Now, people will go about this in different ways. What we have to understand is that something like this, which is extremely dirty, is gonna need something a little bit more enthusiastic to get it cleaned. So what I'm using here is a very soft chemical kaiser trill brush um, by hand, and I'm also gonna be using a scrubbing brush as well. So I pre-soaked this roof with all-purpose cleaner and left it to dwell for about 15 minutes to work its magic. From there, I've then used the, it's extremely soft, I should emphasize this, Chemical Guys uh, brush. And I'm just doing circular motions on the roof just to loosen off the sort of first layer of dirt and crud as it was. And then I'm gonna rinse that off. Once that's rinsed, I'm then gonna use this little sort of nail brush, which is a little bit stiffer just to go around the edges of the seams and things where the green moss has really bitten in. And this is something that's really important to know that these roofs nine times out of 10, as we can see on camera, have a pattern. And it's really important that when we're using the brush on the roof, that we go with that pattern. The reason being is that's what's full of all the gunge and the green stuff. And if we were just to go from side to tr side across it, it wouldn't flush it out fully. So you'll see me specifically as I go for across the whole roof in a minute, I'm making sure I'm constantly in line with that pattern to get all that crud flushed out of that sort of material so when it dries, it looks even and all one colour. I think another point of reference here as well is that I've applied one relatively strong coat of all-purpose cleaner to start with, gone over the Chemical Guys brush, rinsed that down thoroughly, then gone over the nail brush maybe two or three times um, and by the time you get to the last pass, it's removed all the all-purpose cleaning out of the roof and it's fully flushed out. Because let's be honest, when it starts raining and there's potentially bubbles coming out of the roof, it's not a good look for a Mercedes. And likewise, unfortunately, with a roof that's this bad and dirty, because it's wet, you might not necessarily see um, some of the marks or green mold or whatever that's still in there. So you have to let them dry fully and then inspect it and you may unfortunately have to go over it again and again 
um, to get near perfection. Uh, this one wasn't too bad. I think I was probably spent in total about somewhere between about an hour, an hour and a half cleaning the roof alone just to get it to what I would class as 85%, 90% better as we'll see in the aftershots. So my interaction with the interior of this car was limited. It was purely just giving it a good vacuum cleaner, going over with a small purpose cleaner, removing all the dirt and the filth, and then leaving it to a subcontractor to come in and recolor the interior. It's something I haven't done yet. So if you would like me to have a go at that, you can buy kits and stuff and maybe do a tutorial or something we could watch and learn together. Uh, recoloring seats, we could give that a go. So let me know in the comments. In this situation, my customer already had somebody who does this on a regular basis for him. So he came in, recolored the seats one afternoon, and then I could then proceed with the rest of the job. So with the interior now clean, we can see the extent of the damage on the seats. And something that the interior guy was gonna struggle with a little bit when I had a chat with him in person, was the fact that due to the cars being 15 years old, it's faded different times. And as we look at this center armrest, because that's been folded up and it's been hidden away from the sun, when you fold it down, it's quite a different color. So it's something that when he was recoloring the interior, it was a little bit harder than it would usually be because certain plastic trims, for example, have faded at different times. So the end results are quite good but it is always going to be a compromise because of the fact that he's not going to be paid to paint the whole interior of the car just the seats and certain areas which have been damaged this little painted area is covered up once the roof is closed so it was important to polish this now and also there was a nasty compound residue or polish from previous years. So I've just gone around with a little cotton bud and just cleared that out so it looks nice and presentable again. Once that's done, a bit of spray sealant over the top and I can put the roof back up. So we're on the second day now. Uh, the gentleman's come in in the afternoon, recolored the interior, so I can now continue with what I need to do, which is to remove the alloy wheels and do a smart repair on the face of them. They're not the worst I've done. Um, I've concentrated quite heavily on this in the last two previous episodes, so I'm gonna skip through that process today. I'll just show you the extent of the curbing, which is mainly around the outside of the alloy wheel. The center wasn't too bad, but it definitely needs to be tidied up and improved. So once the wheel's fully prepped, we can go over with some etch primer to seal that bare metal and give the base coat something to adhere to properly. Uh, once that's dried, that takes about 15 to 20 minutes. We're then gonna go over the base coat, which is the silver paint. 
and again likewise within sort of 15-20 minutes once that's fully cured we'll then go over with the lacquer or clear coat some people will call it which is going to give it the nice shiny finish. So these wheel bolts look awful and although it's only a little bit of surface corrosion if we stick them back on a nicely painted alloy wheel it's going to kind of kill the effect. So what I'm going to do first here is just use a wire brush on the threads of the bolt because they're just a bit gummed up with dirt and old grease from years gone by and I want to make sure that when the wheels go back on that these really sit nicely back in the threads and they torque up correctly. From there I'm going to use the little grey scotch bright pad and I'm just going to key up the top of the wheel bolt just to remove the surface dust and uh, rust and bits and bobs that are on the top there prior to painting them. Next I'm going to clean the wheel bolts in solvent degreaser for the obvious reason I don't want any grease or grit on them because this will affect the paint sticking to it so give them a thorough wash of that first and clean up prior to painting them. Now we don't want to get any paint on the lower part of this bolt or on the thread and I've seen people in the past get like a cardboard box and shove the bolts through there to protect them but this is a really good reusable item and it's about £2.50 off eBay it's just literally a large test tube holder and the bolts just wonderfully sit in the um, slots for the test tubes and isolate the bottom so when you paint them you only get the top part done. I've also used a paint that's got rust inhibiting agents in it so it's a little bit like Hammerite as well so it's going to seal that up and prevent it from rusting in the future. So once the wheel bolts now the wheel are dry, they've been refitted. I've also given the caliper a little bit of a tidy up as well, which you'll notice in the background. It's just a simple case of putting some tire dressing on and the customers provided me with some new center caps, which are also the newer style as well. Body work wise, I've already gone over with a vehicle with some tire and glue remover to get off any road tire spots and bits and bobs like that. I'm now gonna run over it with a clay bar just to remove any bonded contamination and fallout, etc. prior to giving it machine polish. So I'm going to use the inspection light here just to highlight some of the light marring and more deeper scratches on the panel. Customers opted for a single stage paint correction which is going to remove, I would probably gather 60-70% to 70 of those defects and restore a decent amount of shine back to the panel and overall give the car a nice glossy appearance. As we reintroduce the spotlight we can see that majority of the light marring has been removed and some of the heavier scratches. So we'll repeat this process over the whole of the car and by the end of it it should look quite nice and shiny again. Once the car's machine polished, um, I used a compound which is a sealant as well. And I'm just going to go over with PNS bead maker over the top of that, which is just going to offer a little bit more protection and a little bit more of a deep gloss as well. So with the glass complete, we're done. So we'll take the vehicle outside and we'll do a little bit of before and after. So as we go from before to after, we'll notice that it's things like the silver alloy wheels that really pop now because they're nice and shiny once before, whereas they were a little bit faded and tired and curbed. And the bodywork as well, it's just got that real nice sort of mirror look finish to it, which is a massive improvement than what was there before. It's little things like the wheel bolts, the brake caliper and a new badge that make the reconditioned alloy wheel look so much better. 
So some marks do remain in the roof and to get it absolutely perfect, I'd have to spend three or four hours more and I probably could recolor the roof as well to get it absolutely pristine. But that just wasn't in the budget, unfortunately. I think one of the biggest things we can talk about is the budget. Um, I get in the comment sections quite a lot. Why don't you take the seats out more often? It's because my customers are in the motor trade and, and they want an overall improvement on the vehicle. I do understand some channels spend quite a lot of time taking the seats out and doing the interior, but my customers expect me to do things like heavy paint correction, wheel refurbishment, etc. They're after an overall improvement because they're trying to sell the car. And we talk about price. This vehicle, because it's a trade job, the entire process, so that's the alloy wheels, the detail, and also the seats being recolored was 450 pounds. So when we look at that, it's offered great value for money. And as I say, there's only certain much, certain amount of things we can do in that budget and time span. As always, thank you for watching. You'll be pleased to know that I've got a couple of really disgusting ones coming up shortly. We've got an extremely high mileage Ford. I think it's done about 160,000 miles. And we've also got a four wheel drive that's gonna need a bit of TLC as well. So. Do stay tuned if you haven't subscribed maybe think about doing so and i'll see you on the next video